Hi guys, today I'm gonna to talk about how to use image processing in the browser. So this is using AI models to process images without having to connect those to a server per se. You can basically download AI models to a browser and actually leverage browser technologies to apply some of the things that are traditionally reserved for the server or for edge kinds of applications. In this case, we're gonna be looking at three different kinds of applications where we're gonna be doing image classification, which is basically looking at an image and trying to determine what the the subject of that image is and then providing some kind of verbiage to represent that. We're also going to look at object detection, which is the ability to look at an image and detect certain objects within that image, not just a single object like a classification, but see multiple objects in an image. And then I want to look at a third application, which is image captioning, which is the ability to generate a sentence to describe the image. So it's a little bit more than just object classifications. So let's go ahead and look at these three applications. I'm going to look at each one in turn and then look at some of the code and talk through the technical implementations of each one of of these different kinds of demonstrations. So I'm gonna be doing two different demos in this particular file right here. This is image1.html, and I have another demo, of course, in this one right here, which is image2.html. And they're basically doing a very similar architecture where I'm just going to select a file and it's gonna be completely in the browser. Now I am serving these up from a folder on my system here. I have a bunch of files that are just static HTML files, and I'm using Node.js to serve those up right here. So you can see, uh, Node.js is running. There's no special code in this. It's just a standard uh, static server in Node.js. And I use that just simply because it's easy to spin up a static web server using this. In any case, once it's up and running, uh, all you have to do is point a browser to the file and you can pull up these demos. Now, behind the scenes, what these are doing is going to take an image and it's going to then load the image into the browser's memory. And then it's going to then apply that particular image to the AI models that it's downloaded and then process those using browser technology, then spit out results. So let's do this one right here. I'm gonna choose an image right here. Let's choose this image of a dog and that's my uh, golden retriever. And uh, it's gonna take a minute to process this in the background. And this one uh, did fairly well. Um, it's not perfect, but it did pretty decent on the uh, object detection right here, it got a uh, fairly high confidence score on Golden Retriever, which is 67%. Uh, and then it had two other possibles here, uh, different kinds of dogs at 8% and 5.5%. 5, uh, 5 .5%. But down here, it uh, did an object detection of a bear, which that's uh, kind of like a dog, I guess. But in any case, you can see that it's not always going to be 100%, but it does get pretty close, at least with that one it did. And let's try one other uh, demo here. Let's try this one of the same dog, a uh, different angle though, and see what it gives here. And so this one is going to give me, again, golden retriever. Uh, and this one is giving me a prob probability of 85% of a golden retriever, then a you know 9% of a Labrador, and then a 3% of an English foxhound. But it did get the object detection right using uh, the object detection model uh, for object detection. So let's take a minute and look at this code behind what it's doing for image classification right here and object detection. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to uh, load these up inside of Visual Studio uh, code and then we can take a look at them here. So image1.html is using tensorflow.js behind the scenes. And so tensorflow.js is just a JavaScript library that it lets you use AI models, specifically those built for TensorFlow in a JavaScript context. So this would work on Node.js or in a browser. So of course, in this case, we're focusing on the browser implementation. So to make this work, Pretty much all you have to do is point this to the CDN for uh, TensorFlow.js, and then you point it to the actual the actual models that you want to use, which are also on TensorFlow.js's CDN as well. And so we're going to load up mobile net and Cocoa-SSD, uh, and then those behind the scenes will actually do some other things. So it's loading up scripts, then that download other things in the background. But for our purposes here, that's really all I have to do to wire up TensorFlow and then just use the API from there. So my API is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, all I'm doing is listening for an event uh, for an image upload uh, at event here. And then that one will grab the image here. It'll use a file reader and it loads it into uh, an image right here. 
and then it will scale it down and then process it. It performs um, the image classification right here against mobilenet.model and the classification right here. And then that's where it gets the image classification from. And then for the Coco SSD right here, it's down, it's doing pretty much the same thing. And it's getting object detection from that. And, you, and then it draws boxes around it. And the draw boxes is just using a canvas API uh, for the boxes that it returns right here. Now, the models that this is using is mo a mobile net, which is an image classification model. It's fairly common for uh, different kinds of mobile applications, and it works really well in a browser context as well because a browser is going to have a much more limited context. So uh, mobile net is built on a large set of images, and it's really designed for efficiency and compactness, although the accuracy can be off on some kinds of things. But for a lot of common objects like maybe coffee cups and mobile phones and people and you know dogs as we saw it does work fairly well the uh, the object uh, detection here is based on the coco ssd model when coco is a uh, set of data that was built from the coco image set that is provided by microsoft and it built an entire object collection in that with pre-tagged images and then within that you can filter it down to a subset of that if you want to train your own custom models but the uh, standard uh, coco ssd model right here is small enough that you can use it in a browser context and in this case uh, i loaded it up and i just performed the object detection using uh, the coco image set and then that gave me the bounding boxes around the results that we just saw here so this code is very straightforward and easy to use the, the implementation is very straightforward and easy to use so again something very useful in the uh, mobile context or in the browser context if you want to use this on a mobile phone or on the desktop browser if you will for this kind of ai in the browser so for the next demo we're going to be using transformers.js which is a similar library to tensorflow.js where you are enabled to use ai models in a browser or javascript context so it worked for node.js as well as a browser but in this one i'm going to load up an image and it's hopefully going to produce a, a caption of some kind for the image a phrase describing it so a young girl holding a red flower in her hand although you can't see her hand it did pick up on the fact this is a young girl and a red flower so definitely a fairly accurate description of what's going on here so let's look at the code for this one it's very similar to what we saw before it's a little bit different from what we saw with, with uh, tensorflow.js but this one is using uh, transformers.js uh, so i'm you know basically loading that up and it's uh, loading it up as a module and using uh, pipeline which this uses a pipeline concept so it's kind of you know, chaining things together uh, as part of a process so this one is also listening to an image uploader and then then it's this one instead of creating an image context is actually creating an image uh, a blob url i think uh, to basically load this into a blob and then get a url for it because this one's going to require a url to analyze the image so by wiring up the blob url and then uh, load up the pipeline and then this uh, pipeline right here just tells it which pipeline i'm using in transformers.js so it's got a lot of predefined pipelines and this tells it what model i'm using so this one is going to be doing image detects which is basically doing some kind of captioning on the image and then this is the model i'm using gpt image captioning and it gives it a, it expects a url and then it gets back some kind of caption and so this one is getting back the caption and simply just displays it on the screen and so after it's done it just cleans up the blob url and then uh, exports that and assigns it to an image on the screen if you want to so it can display the image as well so all that is pretty straightforward uh, there's really not a whole lot going on in this but you can see how it is working by simply taking the browser context giving it an ai model giving an image and then doing some processing on the image building a blob passing that to the the model and getting a caption back and then putting that back to the screen just like you would do if you're doing this on the back end server but in this case doing it all within the context of an html page so we looked at image classification object detection 
and image captioning in a browser, but by extension, you could use this in a hybrid mobile application or, or a desktop hybrid application as well. So there's a, definitely a way to get AI into the hands of users uh, in the applications that you might be delivering to them. So we're gonna be looking at other videos in this vein for video as well as audio, maybe some Gen AI applications as well. So look for those and I'll obviously drop a link to these demos in the video description down below so that you can find the repo and use these as just kind of a baseline for how you might want to use these in your own software development. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.